to this morning is the town council regular meeting Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021 at 8 a.m. Uh, at this point, we will ask Dennis to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice for all. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, moving on to item number two. Uh, Visitors, are there any visitors on the call that would like to be recognized at this time? Any visitors that would like to be recognized? Hearing none, we will move on to number three, which is the approval of the minutes for the February 17th, 2021 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Thank you. Uh, number four is the appointments and reappointments, and we do not have any on the board for today's meeting, so we can move on to number five, uh, which is a line item transfer request for economic development mission. Uh, everybody has the transfer funds request. Um, I don't know who is, Carl, can you speak to this, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is part of the moving forward with the downtown facade program. Uh, the commission wants to use its remaining budget to engage a local architect to come up with design concepts that can be presented to uh, interested businesses to give them ideas for how to improve their facade, uh, to improve the look of the downtown. Um, they don't anticipate that they're going to spend their budget this year, so that's why it's pulling all the money from their previously approved budget into one line item. There isn't a line item that's responsive to engaging an architect, so uh, the intent here is to have something in place to assist the businesses that are interested in improving their facades. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the line item transfer for the Economic Development Commission? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Uh, line item number six, Chairman's reports. Um, very quickly, just again, thanking everybody for all the work during the budget workshops um, and all the work they've uh, done so far um in all the budget related items um so just wanted to make sure everybody uh was thanked again for all the work that they put into getting this to where we are so far um and other than that i just wanted to thank mike and Neff, uh for all the work that he's doing through the covid um registrations um he's also set up a recently set up a email which is covid help at clintonct.org um so that as we go forward anybody who has any questions concerns or comments uh in reference to the registrations for COVID vaccine shots, uh, they can submit their questions uh, to that email address. So thank you again to Mike for all he's done uh, during this process and helping people get registered for their vaccines. Uh, now moving on to seven town managers report. Oh, one more thing on mine. Um, I know we talked about the last time about doing something as far as um, kind of getting the word out so that people understand kind of, again, the divisions between town manager, town council, Kind of what the responsibilities are, jobs are as it relates to that. Um, so again, I haven't thrown that away, but still trying to figure out a, a way that we can do that. Um, you know, putting it out to the public and having sort of a public forum or Q and A or things like that. I don't want it to turn into something that it's that it shouldn't be, uh, which is a why doesn't you know why doesn't this person do that? Why doesn't this person do that? Um, I want it to be more so. Here's our town charter. The town charter dictates the job responsibilities for a town manager, for a town council, or for a chairperson. And then that way we can kind of direct everybody um, you know, to the proper, you know, proper place when we're coming up with these decisions. Nobody here has, you know, free reign to go out on their own and make a decision or make any um, you know, any changes to anything without full council, uh, you know, full council involvement and obviously the town manager working directly with the council. So still trying to figure out a way that we can best do that. Um, get by still getting some input from the public as far as what their main questions may be so that we can give them um, 
you know, the correct answers instead of having everybody, you know, out there coming up with, oh, well, I think this person should be doing that. And I think they should be doing this. And it just, it's, it's not working. And I think it needs to be hopefully for the final time resolved so that people understand what the responsibilities are and should they have questions where they can go. We do have a town charter. Town charter dictates how our town is run. So um, still working on that to see what is the best way to come up with some way to handle all that. So just wanted to follow up on that as well. Um, town manager's report. Carl. <laughs> A couple items to call your attention to since the last time we met. Uh, the Council of Governments met uh, last week, uh, there was a discussion with the attorney that's been used by the COG, who's been in, involved with the governor's executive orders, um, really going over this fundamental issue of the governor's powers currently slated to expire on April 19th and what that means for municipal operations um, going forward. I uh, kind of alluded to this already that there is some issues at the local level that we all need to plan and have some certainty associated with our budget processes. And unfortunately, the governor's uh, authority seems to go away in the middle of most municipalities' budget process. So there's a desire to get some clarity in terms of how we're supposed to do things going forward. Uh, there's been some reluctance coming out of uh, his office to issue anything that extends beyond April 19th. There has been a suggestion that the General Assembly should be picking up some of these issues. Um, so I don't I don't know where that is in terms of who's going to do what, um, but clearly there's going to have to be some continued flexibility as we head, on, head into April and uh, whether that deadline moves, whether he's given an extension of hours or not. Um, so there's, there's still a certain lack of clarity in terms of where we're going uh, on that front. Uh, it was reported that uh, natural hazards mitigation plan was reviewed by the state. They didn't have any uh, comment on it, and they have now moved it along to FEMA. Uh, so they're the next step in the review process for that, that document. At the Estuary Transit Board, there is continued conversation on the consolidation effort with uh, Middletown Area Transit. The memorandum of agreement between the two transit boards uh, has gone off to the DOT, uh, pending DOT feedback. That will set off another round of negotiations. Uh, the key to that is making sure that the DOT lives up to the funding um, commitments that it was making in the study phase in order to implement the merger of the two transit boards. Uh, the town attorney completed a training for the board assessment appeals last week, uh, reminding them of roles and responsibilities, reminding them of standards for how they should be reviewing um, appeals, reminding them of their statutory obligations. So there was sort of a, a primer and uh, for those that haven't been through anything through the uh, Assessors Association and then a reminder to longer term board members of how they should be proceeding during their hearing process. Uh, since the COG meeting normally gives us the way to get some insight into Mira, uh, they were meeting on the same day. So we have a, a report came in afterwards on what happened at the Mira board meeting. Uh, so we did get a letter earlier this week uh, telling us that there is an increase in rates. Uh, so we kind of knew that there was going to be an increase. It just didn't have an idea of what the magnitude of the increase was going to be. Uh, however, Mira, as a going concern and as an operational entity, uh, there's a, a question mark for how waste is going to be handled going forward. Uh, Mira was expecting that they were going to be able to operate the Hartford facility as, a, as an oversized transfer facility uh, to collect waste and ship it out of state. Uh, DEP has taken a position that they do not have that authority under their existing permits and they would need to secure a new permit in order to do that. Um, there's a timeline associated with it. There are regulatory issues with Hartford. Um, so that creates some problems with Mira's ability to follow through on its intended plan of using Hartford as a transfer facility. 
Uh, as a result, Miro is going to have to contract with uh, any other waste energy facility in a state that has capacity. Um, there's probably some capacity, but not enough to carry the full load. Uh, and then private transfer stations to handle municipal waste. Uh, what that means for future tip fees is uncertain at this point. Uh, either way, large amounts of solid waste are going to be shipped out of the state, uh, given the fact that there's no real direction set for uh, solid waste in the state. The DEP commissioner was at the Mira meeting. Um, she was discussing the process that had been undertaken since uh, the fall to try and collect information on other ideas and how the private sector could scale up uh, if given capital and, and other opportunities to handle waste. Um, it was suggested that Mira take on that responsibility of creating and managing RFPs to have the private sector uh, fill the gaps that now exist in the solid waste system. Uh, Mira indicated that they don't have the means to do that. And apparently the commissioner also suggested that Deep didn't have the means to do that. So the ability to move forward on some of the ideas that came out for handling solid waste uh, has, a, has a question mark attached to it. So we've got certainty on what's going to happen with solid waste going into the new fiscal year. Uh, but beyond that, there's clearly state level policy issues that need to be ironed out uh, for where, where we're going as, uh, as a state. Uh, the only other item to call your attention to is uh, Kelsey Town Road Bridge. Um, we're moving on that project. Uh, we've got a good contractor who also wants to move on that project. Uh, DOT had a coordination meeting earlier this week. Uh, the detour for around the road will start on the 15th, uh, which is two weeks from uh, this week. And the project uh, will get started at that point in time. And that's the extent of the report. Do they know how long the, road, the detour is going to be in place for the Kelsey Town Bridge? For the duration of the project, uh, they're starting a little earlier because of uh, you know, we're allowed to do under uh, winter mobilization. Uh, so they're updating their schedule to reflect the winter mobilization at this point. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Questions? All right. Uh, Town Council Committee liaison reports. Anyone have any updates? Mr. Chair, quickly, the uh, Inland Wetlands Commission met last night. I did overhear some of their uh, their talk. They are looking at possible bonding schedules, is, is what I was is what I took from it. And they're also due to visit the Bausch uh, application next Tuesday. It's the twelve thousand square foot building. There was a, apparently a missing calculation for a drainage swale. That's uh, next Tuesday. And then planning and zoning. I, I think, and I. I Someone corrects me if I'm mistaken, but the developers due to meet with SHPO today to discuss some possibilities of retaining some of the historic value of the um, the property on 153 West Main Street. Uh, I just also heard, and I'm sure well, the um, the Indian River Landing project is moving right along very quickly, and uh, Greylock spokesperson Ken Navarro has speculated that the opening would be at the end of this calendar year. So. That's exciting news. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Anyone else? Hearing none, we can move on to number nine, which is uh, real estate pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1 206 D. We have a motion to go into executive session and invite Carl and Mary. Chris, I just have a clarification that I have on regarding communication. Okay. So yesterday, regarding the correspondence that you had sent, or excuse me, Mary had sent off, um, you had asked Mary to stop forwarding the information since the public would have the opportunity to speak at a later date, and this correspondence can be brought forth at that time. Um, just for clarification, the town council email, catch-all basin email, how often are those being forwarded and are all the communications being forwarded on a daily basis? 
Okay, just to clarify, <clears throat> I never told Mary not to forward those to town council members. So those I, I've never said that. All the correspondence that does come to the okay. I, I I what I addressed last night was the fact that we did receive correspondence, that it was sent to the council members, that the council members had this correspondence, and that we wouldn't be discussing it last night because it wasn't a public hearing. That's what I said last night at the meeting. So that being said, the correspondence that we receive from that box gets checked by Mary on a daily basis. And if there's things that are there, they will go out. We're not hiding anything. We're not holding back anything. We're fully transparent. And every council member receives everything that goes to that. Should somebody who sends something in requests that it be forwarded to all council members. So that's how it's handled. And that's how it's been handled from the beginning. So there, there's no, you know, there's no conspiracy theory here. Everything goes out and I've never told Mary not to send anything out to council members. Those words never came out of my mouth. Just for clarification, I read directly from the email that was distributed. So that was a quote um, regarding the town council. I said was that we weren't, we would not be speaking about these tonight because it wasn't a public hearing. That's what I said. All right. Um, again, correspondence can be brought forward at a, another time. The Correct. concern again, can I, if I can finish, please, the concern yeah. I have is that we have catch all town council email address that now gets um, that those emails are supposed to be forwarded to all council members. It's been almost a year and I have really received absolutely nothing through that email address. So I would just like to bring that attention to the rest of the council members and um, I just want to make sure that we're receiving any and all communication. And again, regardless of whether somebody asks to have them forwarded, because the assumption by the public when they are sending an email to the town council at clintonct.org is that is communicated to all council members. So moving forward, I will ask that all of those emails are distributed to all council members consistently and proactively. And we'll continue to do that as well. And the reason that they all go to a town council general email box is so that individual council members aren't off on their own island making comments to the public that may need to include all council members. As I'm, as I'm sure you're aware, individual council members shouldn't be talking to the public as a council member without everybody on the council knowing. So we'll continue to send those emails out like we have and, and, and everybody will get the correspondence. And, and All right, just interested. again for clarification, I have not received any emails except for the first ones that started okay. last night. Um, and in addition, as town council members, we have every opportunity to speak directly with the public. We do I not mean, have any um, preclusions from speaking directly with the public and or emailing the public any communication. We all do have individual email addresses, which have been utilized in the past. Um, and just because there's now catch all basin for all emails, doesn't mean we can't continue to communicate with the public individually. Um, I've had certain people contact me directly um, related to matters on the town council that they've wanted to speak with me directly. And, and that is our right as elected officials. And so as as right, and as a council member, you brought those forth to the council on what people have asked you about, because if you're answering that question, you're answering on behalf of yourself and not on behalf of the town council as a whole. So that was one of the reasons why we wanted to catch basin. So I'm sure then the people that are coming to you with concerns or questions that you're bringing those forth to the council so that we can all know what, what the concerns are and what the questions are. So if I'm answering an email, I'm answering them directly from my email address, which is open to FOIA. It is a town council email. I'm happy to share any of my communication. And again, I would appreciate that is also, let me finish. I would appreciate if that is also um, reciprocated from the chairman level as well. So I'm assuming that the chairman sees, receives plenty of communication that we as um, town council members have not seen. Again, my my email box, is pretty bare for one year in. Um, and what my concern again is that email communication is being distributed down to every council member. And that that's all, I just want that clarification and that action taken. Yeah, and I, and I think everything's been, been pretty transparent so far as far as everything goes here. I, I think we've been very open about having discussions about what's going on. So yes, we'll, we'll continue to do what we, we have done in the past and get the communications out to the council members. And again, we'll, we'll once again, 
you know, we, we always have this battle about, you know, what information is out there and who wants what and who's going to say what and all this other stuff. And again, I'll, I'll clarify again, we need to continue to work together as a council as one. And that's why we've tried to do what we can to monitor basically having a catch all basin for town council members so that council members aren't speaking to the public on behalf of the council. Because should they be saying something to a member of the public that maybe not everybody else has, you know, heard about or has the opportunity to discuss, it could be misleading to the public because on behalf of one council member, they're saying this is what we should be doing, yet the whole council hasn't been informed of that. So anything I get, I bring to the council, anything that people question me about that, that is pertinent other than the fact of how long is a road gonna be closed or when, you know, when is there gonna be a COVID, you know, a registration updated town hall, yeah, anything pertinent as far as that decision making goes, it is fully brought to the council. I have no, I have no ability to make a decision on my own, nor do I choose to. That's why there's six other council members. So that's why everything that I do receive, I will bring and will continue to bring to the council so we all can discuss it as a council. We are now on number nine, which is the real estate. So is there a motion? Did we have a motion to go into an executive session? Okay, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are now back out of executive session. And at this point, we'll move on to item number 10, which is a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second? Second. second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose, abstain. Thank you again, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.